Okay, so what we're going to be working through um, today is going to be lesson five in relations and functions. And this is going to be essentially showing you the graphing calculator, which I've already introduced. So we will quickly um, go through what I've already shown and then a few new features. And remember that for a test, you will always be able to use your calculators at the 10 level. And um, if you, want to do it by hand, you could do it by hand. If you want to uh, graph it to verify, you could graph it to verify. At the 30 level, just to sort of give you guys something to think about, we actually start having something called no calculator tests, um, but it would be, it's math that you could easily do without a calculator. And we prepare you for that in the 30 level because in calculus, a lot of my tests are no calculator uh, because in university, they take away your calculators. So what I want to do is I want to look at the graph of y is equal to negative 1.25x plus 15. So everybody take out your graph and calculators and let's type in um, on your calculators. So go to y is equal to. Clear anything that you have. And remember that these plots should not be highlighted. So for example, you'll get an error on your calculator if you try to enter something and plot one is highlighted. Uh, that would be for uh, something else we would do in Math 30. So to unselect a plot, you just would scroll over it and hit enter, and then it will not highlight it. So just make sure that you have no highlighted plots. Um, negative 1.25, you must hit the negative button, not minus. So negative 1.25, your X button is next to your alpha button, and plus 15. From here, you would hit one of two things. You could hit graph, or if your graph looked a little, um, if your scale was a little off, like let's say you would change these numbers, you hit zoom six standard. And what this does is the standard window on a graph is a 10 by 10 window. So this is going to um, an X value of 10 and a Y value of 10. Now, what I'm going to show you, and I haven't taught you this yet, is how would you change your window in order to be able to see, like, what is this X intercept and what would this Y intercept be? So how we're going to change the window is you go to the window button on your calculator. And I mean, you have to sort of guess, right? You have to be able to what's called extrapolate. Extrapolate is looking off of your graph and guessing. So I'm going to guess that I'm going to change my X values to 15. And I'm, my guess is that it's going to cut before it hits 15. So go to and up here for Y's. I'm not really sure how high I would need to extrapolate. So I'm going to actually change my Y maximum. This would be my Y maximum. Down here would be my Y minimum. This would be my X maximum. This would be my X minimum. So I'm going to change my X maximum to 15 and my Y maximum to maybe 20. And let's see if that's a good window. So go to window. X maximum. I'm going to go to, I think I said 15. And X minimum sorry, Y maximum, I'm going to go to 20. So once you change your window, you then would just hit graph and you should be able to see your window better. Okay. And what you ideally want to see is the best window is when we could see our X and our Y intercepts is our best window. So from here, remember that if I said, what's a table of like, what are some table of values? What I had taught you last class is you could go to second function table, right? And for example, when X is negative four, Y is 20. When X is eight, Y is five. Another way that you could get this when X is eight, Y is five. So this will be new. Go back to graph. I want you to hit this button, second function and then calculate. So second function calculate is above the trace. So second function calculate. I want you to type in a number one for value. I could, you could input any X value you want. 
So this is what you would do if you don't want to look at your table. So let's say uh, x is 8, and I would get a value of 5. The y value is 5. So let's double check on our table. Second function table, when x was 8, y was 5. Now let's say I didn't want to scroll down, right? I don't want to scroll down and I want to find um, a value. So let's say um, when x is 18. So second function calculate. So second calculate number one value when x is 18. Okay, the reason why it did this is because I only actually set my window to go to 15 right, to go to x is equal to 15. So I could go back here and I could change my x. You guys, let's change this to 30. Let's change our x max to now 30 on our graph. So now it's going to 30. Now, if I type in second function calculate, so second calculate, I wanna calculate a value and I want when x is 18. It is negative 7.5 is how you do this. So you need to understand first how to enter into y is equal to. That's the first thing. Second, you need to understand how to change your window so that you could see your two intercepts. If I said, what is your y intercept? Instead of counting up these hatch marks, you guys know that the y intercept is when x is zero. So let's find out what the y-intercept is. Second function, calculate. I'm going to look for a value. And I want when x is 0. That's going to give me my y-intercept. So when x is 0, I'm going to hit enter. And the y-intercept is at x is 0 and y is 15. So you need to understand how to change your window and how to look at your table of values. How you reset your window. So how do we get to that standard 10 by 10 window? Is you go back to zoom and you hit six. Zoom six goes to your standard default, which is a 10 by 10 window, okay? So that is the first page um, on this lesson, lesson five. Now what I want you to do is, Let's look at another one to graph. So I actually now want you to flip to page 436. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is on page 436. Okay, so what they give us on page 436 is that exact same graph. So negative 1.25x plus 15. So if I go back here, I'm just gonna make sure that that's the exact same one. Negative 1.25x plus 15. Okay, so what they are saying is, I'm gonna show you different ways that we could solve this next question. What is the x coordinate? What is the x coordinate when y is equal to eight? So on this graph here, what is the x coordinate when y is equal to 8? So what they are essentially asking is when y is 8, what is the x? There are different methods that you could use to solve this. One method is your table of values. So on your calculator, go to your table of values and find where y is 8. So scroll down, and what we're looking for is when y is 8, what is the corresponding? Oh, and it's not on here. That's why it's not on here. This would be one method to look at your table of values. And then you say to yourself, okay, wait a second. It's not on here. Um, 8 would exist between um, 7.5 and 8.75. So my x value is going to be a decimal, right? It's going to be somewhere between 5 and 6. So the two methods that you could use to solve this is one of two things. You could algebraically solve this. A L. So algebraically. So here's what we're going to do. Write what your equation is. Negative 1.25x plus 15. 
what we are going to do is we are going to take out this y value and I'm going to input in an eight. So they want me to solve when y is eight, negative 1.25x plus 15. We need to algebraically solve for this x. So I need to get this by itself. How do you get rid of a plus 15? The opposite of adding 15 is subtracting 15 from both sides. 8 minus 15, you would figure out what that is. And you would say, okay, negative 7 is equal to negative 1.25x. And then to isolate the x, you've got to get rid of that negative 1.25. These two are being multiplied. So the opposite of multiply is divide both sides by negative 1.25. And the x-coordinate would be um, negative 7 divided by negative 1.25. I know that's going to be a decimal, or sorry, a positive number. So I'm just going to calculate that. Uh, negative 7 divided by negative 1.25. The x coordinate is 5.6. So the x coordinate is 5.6. So when x is 5.6, my y coordinate is 8. How could you verify this answer? How could you verify that on your calculator? Well, here's how you would verify it. On your calculator, let's go to y is equal to, or sorry, our graph, and let's verify 5.6. So go to second function, calculate. So remember, calculate's up here, second function, calculate. I'm going to check a value, and I'm going to check 5.6. And that y coordinate is 8. Okay? So that's how you could verify it. One other last thing I'm going to show you, um, and then we'll do one more class example. So the last thing I'm going to show you is a method that I'm going to teach you in a, um, in a different chapter. So it's going to be two chapters away, but here's another method. So we had in our calculator typed in under y1, we had this equation here, right? So here it said y1. We had typed in the negative 1.25x plus 15. Well, if they give us y is equal to 8, as long you could type anything in your graphing calculator, as long as you have y is equal to. So they gave us y is equal to 8. What I want to show you is that we could punch y is equal to 8 into our calculator in y2. So if you take out your graphing calculators, and if you type in, in y is equal to, here is our equation. They wanted us to solve when y is equal to 8. This is going to give me a red line, and the equation of the line is 8. What does that look like? It is a straight line going through eight. Remember we did the domain and range of this yesterday. The domain of this red line would be X E R, be Y is equal to eight. That's what the domain and range of this would be. If you have two lines on your calculator, the solution is always going to be where these two lines intersect. So where those two lines intersect is going to be the solution. How do you find that on your calculator? So I'm going to show you how to do this, and we will write this down. And like I said, if you don't get this step exactly here, that's fine. This is going to be a whole lesson on finding an intersect. You go to second function, and you go to calculate. So second function, calculate. You are looking for number five. You are looking for an intersect. Um, my cursor is off my screen right now. It's at 0, 15. So I'm going to hit this right arrow and I should, my cursor should eventually come onto the screen. There's my cursor right there. Okay. So see.
to hit your arrow, bring your cursor onto the screen. What you do to find an intersect is bring your cursor relatively close to where those two lines intersect. And then you're going to hit enter three times slowly. So you're going to hit enter, enter, and enter. And it is going to say when y is equal to eight, the solution is 5.6. Okay. So just to see if you understand this, I'm going to give you um, another equation. So what I want you guys to do is let's graph, and I'm just going to give you the equation down here. Just to see if you understand this intersect. Let's graph y is equal to uh, 2x minus 3. So let's graph y is equal to 2x minus 3. So go to your calculators. y is equal to, let's clear both of these. And in y1, type in 2x minus 3. Hit your graph button. This is the graph of 2x minus 3. I want to know what is the x value when y is equal to five. Okay, so just write that. Algebraically, how we would do this, if I said, what is the answer algebraically? Uh, I could take this y out and I could put in five. Add three to both sides. Eight is equal to two x. X is going to be equal to four. So their answer should be, my x coordinate is going to be 4 when y is 5. How I could check that is I could first go to my table of values. Table of values. I was looking for when y is 5. When y is 5, x is 4. Okay, that's one way. Second way is that second function, calculate a value, right? We got x was 4. So let's confirm when x is 4 that y is 5. When x is 4, y is 5. That's the second way. The third way is the intersect method. So the intersect method is we typed this guy in y1. This guy I'm going to type in y2. Um, y2 is equal to 5. And we're going to get the intersect. So let's go back to y is equal to, let's go to five, and let's hit graph. There is the line y is equal to five. The answer is where these two graphs intersect. Second function, calculate. Number five is an intersect. Bring your cursor. It will show you down here where your cursor is. So I'm going to hit the right button on my cursor to bring it close to the intersect. And you guys watch, I don't even have to go right over top. I could actually stop right here. That's pretty close to my intersect. I'm gonna hit enter three times slowly. So enter, enter, enter. And it jumps to the exact intersect at the solution is X is four. Okay, so just make a note down here if ever you need to go back to this. So it's called the intersect method. And the intersect method, again, is when you have two different graphs. And you're always going to hit second function. You're going to hit the trace button. But I call it calculate because what we're actually going to be doing is calculating. That's why we hit second function because it's going to go into there. Second function, calculate. Number five, you're going to hit, and number five says it's an intersect. All right, the last thing that I want to do is on page 439. I want to show you how to enter something. So let's go to 439. This is just showing you, like, step by step how to do the intersect method. So go to 439. 
And I want to show you this one really quickly. Okay. So for this one right here, um, there's different ways that you could enter this. But what this is really is this is really 5x divided by 3 plus 15 divided by 3. Um, 5x, or sorry, 5 divided by 3, it doesn't give us, it will give us a decimal. So I'm going to show you two ways to enter this on your calculator. So if you typed in 5 divided by 3 on your calculator, you would get, um, nope, we're not going to enter it as a decimal because this isn't a rational number. Or sorry, this is a 1.666. So we're going to enter that as 5 over 3. I'll show you how to enter that. Plus 15 over 3. If you could reduce, reduce. So 15 over 3 is 5. How you would enter this on your calculator is, like I always say, always fractions go in a bracket. So this is how you would enter this guy. And on your calculator, clear both y1 and y2. Go to your calculator in y1, type in open bracket, 5 divided by 3, close that bracket, type in your x. And that guy was plus five. And then from here, graph, and you get your graph. Okay. And that is how we do this lesson. I'm just going to stop recording this.